cold chill fills the air as our intrepid heroes find themselves cordially invited to a dinner at the stately home of Gritty City's mayor. You are cordially invited to a dinner at the stately home of Gritty City's mayor. So I've heard. Let's just get this over with. What? Good evening, friends. Welcome to my humble abode. How's it going, Mayor Bear? Thanks for having us over for dinner. Although mansions are usually the first things that come to mind when I think humble abode. It's the least I can do to thank you for all that you've done for our city. Yeah, us risking our necks every night protecting the streets deserves the least you can do. I think what he meant to say was we brought wine. Wonderful. Please, do come in. Oh, this is some place you got here. Thank you. This building is among the oldest in Gritty City. As I understand it, it was originally built on top of a cemetery and it was used as an asylum for the criminally insane. This remained until a few years ago when it was shut down after a particularly gruesome inmate escaped. Or maybe it was because an old gypsy woman put a curse on the building. Either way, the devil worshippers I bought it from were looking for a new place to hold their rituals and I just fell in love with the location. Well, that doesn't sound foreboding at all. Now, all that listening to you has made me hungry. Let's eat. Oh, good night, Margaret. I'm stuffed. Yeah, that was a heck of a meal. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's so nice to hang out with you guys outside of the office. We don't work together in an office environment, Mr. Mayor, but we appreciate the sentiment. Yeah, this was a much nicer evening than I thought it was going to be. I'm surprised you don't have people over more often. Well, I'd like to, but I've been having a little bit of a problem around here lately. Oh yeah, what are we talking about? Pests? Noisy neighbors? Backed up toilets? Ghosts! Okay, alright, let's hear it. You see, I believe my home is haunted. Every night around bedtime, a terrible wailing sound can be heard all throughout the house. I've seen objects fly around the room, doors open and close on their own, walls shaking. It's an awful sight to behold. Have no fear, Mr. Mayor. Or rather, you will have no fear. As we'll do everything in our power to rid your residence of revenants. Oh, how lovely. I feel safer already. Yeah, we're all in the case. <laughs> this should make for a hilarious evening. Protecting the mayor from every little bump in the night. Cut the comedy. The mayor has a ghost problem, and it must be serious if he's asking for our help. What? Don't tell me you believe in ghosts. Of course I do. I'm just not afraid of them. Come on, think of all the other nonsensical stuff we've seen in our adventures. One more otherworldly thing isn't going to kill us. Unless this one happens to be the one that finally does us in. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, can you think of anyone who would want to haunt you? Well, the high school guidance counselor who said it would never amount to anything died of shock when I was elected. Would that count? Hmm, maybe. Then again, I'm not a detective. You know, a house as big and old as this probably has some secret rooms or hidden passageways. I bet there's stuff around here that you don't even know about. Something scary too, right? Like a crypt or a sacrificial altar. Yeah, now you're getting it. Something around here is bound to open up a hidden passageway, and I bet finding it will explain everything we need to know about this ghost. Quick, um, move that ship around. Okay, uh, now pull out those books. Now move that candlestick. There you go. You won't find any secrets in this house. I've played hide-and-seek in every room, and believe me, there were no hidden areas. Dang. Well, sorry I destroyed your study for no reason. Whatever. I had fun. Me too! Oh no. That's it. That's the sound of the scary ghost. Sounds like a very restless and unruly spirit. We may have our work cut out for us tonight. Oh, good. No, don't worry about a thing, Mr. Mayor. We'll be right outside protecting you from whatever supernatural shenanigans come your way. And I ate all the leftovers in the kitchen, so that won't attract any ghost ants or... Oh, whatever. For all I know, that may have been my last meal. I'm too s s scared to fall asleep. Could one of you tell me a bedtime story? Unfortunately, all my best stories involve violence and aren't very conductive for lulling someone into a relaxed state such as sleep. However, my friend here weaves wonderful tales. He'll have you on the fast track to dreamland before you know it. I do, and I will. Um, okay. So, once upon a time, a handsome prince was out on a date with a beautiful princess that he had met at the gym. The noble prince had it all planned out. They were going to go to the movies, they were going to have a nice dinner afterwards, but along the way, uh, they wanted to stop into the drugstore. And unknown to the prince, he parked in front of a tow-away zone. And the car was towed, even though we were only in the store for like two minutes, and... Good night, you little dullard. Well, that takes care of that. Any sign of our ghostly intruder? Not yet, but I thought of a way to get its attention. Don't worry, the pain is water-soluble. Wait, it's not water-soluble. Oh, get ready, this may be it. 
okay, this is fine. This is fine. Uh, maybe it's friendly. Ooh, I'm a ghost. Centuries, years ago, I was the commander of a pirate ship, and um, I think the ship crashed or something near here, and uh, now these lands are cursed. I guess? Ah! Holy crap! A real ghost! Shoot it, Kilroy! Shoot it dead! Oh yeah, ghosts are already dead, aren't they? I'm not gonna be much help here, am I? Hey, come on, guys. That's not cool. I'm trying to tell my story here. Anyway, so I was killed by this vile sea scamp, and the guy stole my treasure and, uh, hid it somewhere. Oh, did he hide it in this mansion? Uh, you know what? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. But look, if you help me find my treasure, you will lift my curse, and I will bestow upon you riches beyond your wildest imagination. Really? Maybe? I feel like that's something a ghost would give out, right? Nobody really tells you anything when you're dead. You know if the treasure's in the attic or buried in the backyard or what? Couldn't tell you. Well, was the guy who killed you an ancestor of the mayor's? No, never had kids. Well, then, I don't know what to tell you, except maybe you have the wrong house. Yeah, come to think of it, nothing here is uh, all that familiar. Well, listen, if you can't find what you're looking for, would you mind wrapping it up here? You're keeping our mayor up all night. Really? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, he's been worried sick. What with the walls shaking and the wailing noises and such. Uh, better get out of here, then. Well, uh, thanks anyway, guys. And I'm uh, sorry for the ruckus. Nice guy. He's a pirate. Oh, so he probably stole a lot and murdered people, right? That's what I'm talking about. Good morning, fellows. I had a very restful sleep last night. Does that mean you took care of my ghost problem? We sure have. The days of that pesky poltergeist plaguing this prestigious property are over. Couldn't think of another P word, eh? You're slipping, man. Terrific. I can't thank you boys enough. Now, please leave my property so that I can freely walk around naked as I so often do. And so concludes another thrilling Kilroy adventure. Tune in next time for more half-assed tales that end anticlimactically.